when you're a Hulk. Trouble's gonna find you. This Thursday, weird, unexpected trouble. Let's do this. She Hulk. Hulk Jen is a total snack. Hulk. Yes! Abomination. Namaste. Walk. The Sorcerer Supreme. And Madison. Two ends, one Y, but it's not where you think. Just remember whose show this actually is. She-Hulk is streaming on Disney Plus this Thursday. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new She-Hulk trailer video and early reviews breakdown. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, obviously, and a bunch of details that they revealed about the future of the series and what's going on with Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, like how this all ties in with everything else. Like, everyone's obviously talking about Daredevil coming back again, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. They literally start this week, so I will be posting my episode one video after they release it. Be sure to subscribe to get all those. We're doing a Marvel giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with She-Hulk during Avengers 5. But speaking of Avengers 5, Mark Ruffalo was actually recently talking about how She-Hulk would be in Avengers 5. Like, he was just confirming, like, oh yeah, she's going to be in Kang Dynasty. If you didn't already assume that, like for the most part, the vast majority of all the new characters that they've introduced in Marvel Phase 4, like the brand new ones, will have some kind of role in Avengers 5. Like not every character is going to be as big as the others or get as much screen time. And that doesn't mean that every brand new character is going to be like a core Avengers team member because it's kind of like an Avengers Endgame situation where you have a movie with the core group of Avengers and then many, many other characters helping out in some way. Like, even though Captain America does the biggest Avengers assemble that you've ever seen with them all flying at Thanos' army at the same time, that doesn't mean that all these other hundreds and hundreds of people can also call themselves Avengers. Most of the early reviews are pretty hype on this series, just the way that they use the character in the MCU and, like, the different tone of this series from the other Marvel series. Like, they're trying to make it feel like a completely different thing inside the MCU. In the way that WandaVision felt very different from Falcon and Winter Soldier, felt very different from Moon Knight. Because in the comics, Jennifer Walters is a lawyer by day, like she continues to be a lawyer for superheroes, but also a superhero by night. They basically built this series to feel like a half-hour legal comedy type of show that sort of spins up into big Avengers-level stuff by the end. They actually said that they had to move the order of some of the episodes around, like largely the episodes are what they originally conceived them to be. There were only a couple characters that Kevin Feige would not let them use, like Spider-Man. I'll explain why in a second, because practically it actually makes a lot of sense why you can't use Spider-Man in a series like this, which is mostly like a courtroom drama with a bunch of superhero stuff happening on the side. To make another Daredevil reference, there were so many Daredevil theories about how he was going to help Spider-Man get out of all of his problems with Mysterio. The biggest reason why they couldn't use Spider-Man is mostly just because of what they just did with the spell in Spider-Man No Way Home and what they're doing in all the episodes, having them go through all these trials in court. Like, they would have actually had to use Spider-Man in court, in trials, and it would have just gotten way too weird logically trying to explain how they can maintain the effects of the spell in his secret identity while he's still in court testifying. Like, he would have had to keep his mask on inside all these trials in the court system, at least in the United States, would not have allowed him to do that. Like, he would have had to unmask himself again. So it would have completely taken back all the stuff that they did during Spider-Man No Way Home. So logically, it just did not make sense to put him in all these episodes. The difference with a character like Daredevil is that, like, you have everybody not understanding that Matt Murdock really is Daredevil. But during Daredevil Season 3, that's kind of what Kingpin wanted to do. Like, he wanted to drag his name through the mud, so he had Bullseye dress up in the Daredevil costume, doing all these terrible things pretending to be Daredevil. The way they kind of took that back at the end of the finale is that Daredevil proved that it wasn't him in the costume. Like, no, this is somebody else pretending to be Daredevil doing all these terrible things. So he can continue working as a lawyer by day as Matt Murdock and then at night as Daredevil. So like at least at the beginning of the series, She-Hulk would not know that Matt Murdock is Daredevil. But one of the big changes they said they had to make to the series early on is when they were cutting things together, they had to reorder some of the episodes and events just so that they were easier to understand for non-comic book readers. Originally, they were using a more Moon Knight method to reveal her full backstory. Like, it takes you a couple episodes before you learn what's really going on on Moon Knight. They were originally going to start the She-Hulk series in a similar way, like where you just start with her already being She-Hulk, being a lawyer. But it seems like they just felt like her introduction during that version was a little too jarring for non-comic book readers. Like, if you've ever read any Marvel comics, you probably already understand who She-Hulk is, what's going on with the character, and how she's a lawyer by day, superhero by night, like Daredevil. But apparently for non-comic book readers, apparently it was just too much, too confusing. So they used a more linear path to show you her backstory, who she is, what her personality is, what her relationship with Bruce Banner, Hulk is, and how they're cousins, and then show you her getting the powers, being trained by Hulk, and then going back to her life, where you pick up with her just trying to continue on with her normal life as if nothing has changed, except she's like this almost seven feet tall green rage monster now. 
in her law firm now has her just specifically working on superhero cases, like the Abominations case, for instance. And during the trailers, you hear her make all the jokes about being on the Avengers, how she doesn't want to have anything to do with that lifestyle. But the Hulk warns her that it's not her choice, like now that she has these powers, there'll be larger earth-shattering consequences eventually. The way they plotted the stakes of the series, like overall, is that they actually start out with it being a little bit more mundane and then spin up to Avengers level problems. I guess they kind of did the same thing with Moon Knight too. Moon Knight was only six episodes and this is nine episodes. Like you start out with a more Indiana Jones type quest in Moon Knight where they're trying to get the Scarab, then you learn about them trying to bring back Amit, then finally by the end of the episode Amit finally does come back and starts sucking out everyone's souls and it becomes this huge world ending problem all of a sudden. But like through all the episodes you'll see all the cameo scenes, Wong for instance, big Avengers level cameo, then we'll start to explain why she gets involved with the new Avengers team heading into Avengers 5. Like it'll start with funnier stuff like Wong has a problem, he needs to sue this other magician character like you see him in all these fight scenes here, then later eventually he'll bring her onto the team. The other big connection to the actual Avengers into the Thunderbolt series too on the side is the Sokovia Accords. They said that during the series, because this is like a legal based series, she's a lawyer by day just like Daredevil, the Sokovia Accords are basically like this giant legal document. They will address the terms of the actual Sokovia Accords and what happened to them after Avengers Endgame. So that'll just be another way that she gets involved with Avengers level stuff, this new Avengers team in Avengers 5. The Sokovia Accords were basically a tool that Thunderbolt Ross used to try and control the Avengers, like he was trying to tell them what to do. Obviously that didn't work out for him. I think ultimately that will just build up to them eventually forming the Thunderbolts team. Like, okay, you're an Avengers team that I can control. Sort of like a Dark Avengers, but they'll just call it the Thunderbolts team. In the comics, Thunderbolts and Dark Avengers are two like completely different concepts, but I think in the MCU they'll just try to combine those ideas. I've also already talked about how Jennifer Walters She-Hulk is going to be representing Abomination trying to get him out of prison for all the crazy stuff that he's done since Incredible Hulk and how that's eventually going to lead to Val recruiting him for the Thunderbolts team but like he's just part of it. During the She-Hulk trailers you see a lot of Titania footage of her going at She-Hulk just being completely off the rails crazy. The actress who plays Titania started talking a lot about her being in the Thunderbolts movie. I think Kevin Feige has an idea of what the Thunderbolts roster is going to be, but a lot of that could change on the way because it's going to be a while before they start filming the movie. The other really cool thing that they've revealed is that there's going to be post credit scenes after every single She-Hulk episode. They'll be a little bit different obviously and the end credits themselves like the actual credits scenes where the credits roll are supposed to be fairly epic with a bunch of extra easter eggs. Kind of like the Loki series where there were just a bunch of extra details and easter eggs in the background while the actual credits were playing. They kind of did that a little bit during Moon Knight but not quite as much as they did during the Loki series. So there will be a lot of pausing, a lot of zooming and enhancing on the actual credits themselves, not just the post credit scenes. But the episode 1 post credit scene like the very first one is supposed to be fairly epic. One of the other funny things that Tatiana Maslany was talking about was She-Hulk eventually representing Scarlet Witch in court. Like as if the people of Earth or the people of Westview would sue her for trapping them in Westview for an entire week kind of torturing them. She also referenced about all the crazy stuff that Scarlet Witch was doing during Doctor Strange too. Like Scarlet Witch has been through a lot. She really needs some help. She needs someone to defend her. And if it wasn't clear at the end of Doctor Strange 2, Scarlet Witch is still alive. Like you just see some rubble from the temple collapse on her and then that big burst of chaos magic was basically like a protective barrier to protect her in a bubble literally. So she's still around, it's just Marvel doesn't want to reveal what's happening with her currently until they're ready to bring her back before Avengers 5. Because of the way her powers work, she'll probably be critical during Avengers 5 and then Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Tatiana Maslany was also telling jokes about having scenes with Deadpool because they both break the fourth wall but in the comics I believe Deadpool is meant to be from the same town that Tatiana Maslany is from in Canada in real life. So she was joking about both of them in character talking to each other breaking the fourth wall, going back between the characters talking to each other and the actors themselves talking to each other as if they were not the characters. Like how meta can you actually get when you have a scene with Deadpool and another character that just spends all the time breaking the fourth wall. That's also one of the beauties of Deadpool movies is that they don't have to make sense because Deadpool himself is a character who is not supposed to make sense. So you can get away with pretty much any type of reference or any type of joke that you want. I am curious to see though if when we get to Avengers 5 because Deadpool is also probably going to be in that if he or She-Hulk will break the fourth wall in an actual Avengers movie because we haven't seen that yet. Real big reminder though, my full She-Hulk episode 1 video is going to post Thursday after they release it. There are 9 episodes total so if you have any special requests or big questions, just write them below in the comments and I'll include those in my videos. 
Congratulations, Crave Trance. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my brand new Loki season two first look video and everyone click here for all my She-Hulk episode videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.